I speak with Jackie McKenzie, solicitor and immigration advisor at Lee Door, at Lee Door, Lee, at Lee Day Law. There you go. There was a confusing one to start with. Stephen Wolfe is the director as well for the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity and a former MEP. Good afternoon to you both. Um, Good afternoon. Jackie, nice to have you with us as well. Um, so listen, what is the... I mean, we mentioned we're talking about an alternative here. There seems to be a, lo a lot of momentum now saying this Rwanda thing, even if it does work, you're going to send about seven people to Rwanda uh, every few months. Not really the spirit of what the government were uh, promising or what they were suggesting, this fairly seamless, arranged idea with the Rwandan government. Uh, based on what we've seen in the last seven days, this ain't going to work. So if that's not going to work, what will? Well, my view is that we let the people who are trying to come, come because so few of them do. And I know I keep going on about the data, but, you know, there are 100 million people displaced around the world. We can't ignore that. There are 26 million refugees around the world and there are 5 million people claiming asylum right now. We get about 30,000 people crossing the channel. And had we not interfered or done anything about that and just let that number come, that number wasn't likely to rise. Um, and when you compare that to what other countries, other wealthy countries, I mean, Germany takes in about 2 million refugees, or talking about 2 million refugees last year. I mean, we saw Poland take in 3 million Ukrainians in the last two months. So our numbers are relatively small. And my view is that we should just let people in. However, I do accept that people are very concerned about the impact this has on social services and welfare and housing and so forth. But we don't need to spend the money that we spend on asylum seekers because from my experience most of them have the sorts of skills that this country needs we've got huge shortages in a number of occupations let people work and be responsible for themselves Stephen Wolf, there it is uh, uh, allow it to be d d for people to flow into the country in a more natural fashion assimilate into the workplace therefore you pay taxes you clearly by dint of assimilating you advance your kind of um, credentials as somebody that wants to settle in another country etc what's not to like Stephen? Well, what's not to like is first of all the numbers are incorrect from Jackie the latest data sets on asylum which I was looking at this morning showed that in 2021, 48,715 people applied for asylum in this country, of which an average about 70% at the moment are being approved. But those 30%, which in this year, last year was about 15,000 people, are not being deported once they've had all their appeals rejected. And this year, if you add the same numbers coming through, and let's assume that it's 48,000, not the numbers that we estimate, which is 60 to 80,000, there'll be another 15,000. So you've got in just two years, 30,000 people who will have come to this country and failed the asylum process. And we have no way of returning them at all. And that is cr crucial to the security of our nation, security of our borders, and also to ensure that people feel that they are very comfortable about the way that we deal with asylum. And can I also put this fine, uh, other point about it. We do have safe routes. It was a bit of a shame that Quentin Letts got attacked. We have the UK settlement scheme, which we work with the UNHCR that brings people over. We have the Gateway Protections Programme, the Vulnerable Children's Resettlement Scheme, the Mandate Resettlement Scheme. You could also say that, in a way, the Ukrainian is a scheme. Ukrainian settlement scheme is one, and the one that we're dealing with Hong Kong. So this country does reach out we bring people in. We're just trying to stop those who have no right to come here. And that's not unreasonable, Chucky, is it? That you, you'd well, want to say. Well, I mean, look, we can all you... argue about the data. I mean, I go by the UNHCR's data because the world, they're the world's expert on this. And but we, they, ta so Jackie, they take it from on. they take it from the Home Office data. Yes, but but yes, but the, but last year we processed 178,000 claims. And remember, we granted you know not everybody who claims them. asylum has come across the channel and of the people coming across the channel 98 percent of them and and the, the argument is about the people coming across the channel let's face it 98 percent of them claim asylum when they reach a port and we already know that if you take the whole global number of people in the global in terms of the uk or the general number of people claiming asylum over 75 percent get it which means therefore there are genuine refugees but it is really really important to look at our figures which whether they're 48,000 whether they're 178,000 they are tiny in the global schemes of things and most of them prove 
that they are genuine refugees. I mean, I always cite the case of Trinidad and Tobago. Its population is 1.1 million. It's not a developed Western country. And it took in 400,000 Venezuela, or 500,000, depending on which set data set you use, um, refugees from Venezuela. And, you know, it isn't true that we have safe routes. We've got the uh, ACRA scheme, the Afghan Citizens Resettlement Scheme, which isn't open. The Arab scheme is closed. The scheme that Alf Dubs petitioned uh, for children doesn't work. Syria is closed. Hong Kong is not a refugee scheme. These are British overseas nationals. Um, and the only one that seems to be operating is the one for Ukraine. And we, even there, we're encountering problems and taking very, very... But you would, uh, Jackie, would you, you would acknowledge that even, you know, taking into account whichever numbers one wishes to... To, to select, to, to advance various arguments. There, there yes. will be at the end of the day, as Stephen said, X amount of people who are deemed to be illegal and shouldn't of be course. in this country. Of course, of course. And, you know, I'm not a completely um, sort of open your border and let everybody in, but because that's not what's happening. I'm still very measured where okay. the UK is concerned in, in, in terms of the whole um, I... the global position. But there may well be people. I mean, when we were in, in Europe, we were able to return right. people under the Dublin Convention, and there may well be people that we have can to we, return. Stephen, to... Can, can we just get what, what your alternative would be, Stephen? Somebody mentioned, like, why is there not a big cruise liner in the boat, you know, very similar in, in, the, in the channel? Uh, is, is that a way to do it? People have, I've heard people mention this before. Right, there are only four options that seem to be available. There is one that Jackie would agree, which I'm sure she'd agree. Bring everybody else in and allow councils or the private sector to try and house these people and the British taxpayer pays for them. That is now... Sorry, proven. that's not what I said. I said let them work. We last year imported... But that, uh, and secondly, in, that, Jackie, if I can finish... We brought in people Jack from Barbados to pick strawberries last year. So, Jack, the second, the second route would be the scheme that we're looking at, which is removed them to Rwanda. And as I understand it, there is a second country okay. that is now We've in got negotiations. Ten seconds, Stephen. Sorry. Negotiations. Third, are putting them on boats. Or fourth, the one that I would prefer, is to put them on Prince Charles Burkhall Estate in Scotland, which is 53,000 acres. You could easily take the 60,000 and we can have a tented camp up there. The SNP would be delighted as well, I'm sure. There it is, Stephen Wolf. Thank you, Jackie McKenzie. Thank you to you both.